Hey everyone, or should I say, hey guys, because YouTube tells me that only 7.2% of you are women. I plan to increase this number with this video because I think everybody likes to see a good rack. Now, I've worked on mine quite a bit recently and I think I finally feel ready to show you. As you can see, I naively started with a two-row DIY case which I built from a Dupfer DIY kit and which was painted by the awesome Lebeat here in Cologne. Check out his website, the link is in the description of this video. Of course, two rows of Eurorack are not enough, so I had to build a third one later on for the rest of my modules. In this video I will leave everything unpatched and just show you which modules are in my rack. If you want to skip to a certain module, check the video's description for timecodes. And if you want me to explain a module a little more, just write a comment underneath the video and tell me what you like to see. Alright, let's start with the top row. At the top left we have the Dopfer clock divider, which divides incoming clock signals by 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 and 46. You can also use it as a sub-octave generator, which I explain in another video. Check this video's description for the link. Next to the clock divider we have the clock sequencer, which is an 8-step gate sequencer running on the clock of the clock divider. Next up we have the Rebel Technology Story Kaya module, I think is pronounced, which generates rhythms from an incoming clock. It uses a stochastic algorithm, uh, which I can't really explain to you, but it's really great for a basic layer of drums underneath your song. I use it mainly to trigger my Vermona DRM1 Mark III drum machine, which has trigger inputs. Next up we have the Döpfer Dual Trigger Delay module, which, as its name implies, delays an incoming trigger, so you can have offbeat triggers as well. The next module is a simple OR gate, which I built from the instructions found on the Döpfer DIY page, which is also linked in this video's description. It has six inputs and one output, so whenever one of the inputs is high, for example it receives a gate or a trigger, then the output is high as well. This is great if you want to mix triggers or gates together and have just one output for them. Next up we have the Dubfa Quad Sequential Switch module, which is a module everyone should have in his or her rack, I think. It receives trigger inputs and then cycles through four outputs and maps them to one input or the other way around. So you can have more variation in your sounds or control voltages because you can automatically step through several of them. To the right of that we have a Dupfer Passive Multiple module, which I don't think I need to explain. It's just two times four sockets connected to each other to multiply a signal. Okay, now to the second half of the top row. Here I have two make noise function modules, which are slope generators that can be used as an attack decay envelope, as an LFO, as a slew generator, clock generator and so on. And it's really powerful and useful for a lot of things. I explain how to use a make noise function as a sub oscillator in another video of mine. Next up we have the Dupfer Quad Decay module, which generates four individual decay envelopes and can be triggered either individually or on the whole. Next to the Quad Decay I have a Dupfer Dual VCA module, which are two separate VCAs that can be switched from linear to exponential. Next to that I have a Dupfer Quad Exponential VCA module, which also acts as a mixer and only takes 6 HP, so it's really great to have in your rack because you can't have enough VCAs. And then finally I have a regular Dupfer Exponential mixer module with four inputs mixed to one output. Okay, on to the second row. Again, if you have any questions or want me to go in more detail for a certain module, just write me a comment below this video. Alright, so first we have the DINSYNC ModSeq, which is an 8-step CV sequencer with only 4 knobs. So the first 4 steps output the control voltage the knobs are set to, and the second 4 steps will output the inverse of that. So this is not so useful for pitches, but it's really cool for modulating other parameters like filter cutoffs and so on. Next to the ModSeq I have the Turing machine plus the Pulses expansion. I really really like this module because it's not only a great melody generator, it also generates nice rhythms from the Pulses module, it is a noise source and you can also use it as an oscillator, which I show in another video of mine. It's also not that complex to build yourself, 
So if you're a DIY person, just look it up on the internet and order your own DIY kit. Next to the Turing machine I have a Döpfer voltage inverter module, which has two separate inverter sections, which yeah, just invert incoming voltages. Next to that there is the Circuit Abbey INV module, which is a dual attenuverter, offset generator, amplifier, mixer, multiple and even wave shaper. So quite a lot of features packed into a very small module. I show its wave shaping capabilities in another video of mine, so check that out as well. Next up we have the IntelliJ U-Scale or Microscale, which is a quantizer that I mainly use with the Turing machine output so that the melodies are nudged into scales which I can program with the Microscale. The next module is the IntelliJ Dixie VCO, which again is a small module with a lot of features. Not only can it act as a low frequency oscillator as well, it also has linear FM, pulse width modulation and sync, as well as six separate waveform outputs. Next to that I have the Noise Engineering Ataraxic Translatron module, which is another VCO based on digital chip tune sound generators. So it gives you really harsh and noisy chip tunish waves that you can also cycle through using control voltages, which makes it really fun to use. Okay, second half of the second row. The first module on the left is the IntelliJ Micro VCF or UVCF, which is a filter with low pass, band pass and high pass outputs. It also works as a sine and sawtooth wave oscillator, which I also show in another video. Next up there is the Döpfer voltage control phase shifter, which is a phaser effect that can be controlled via control voltages. Next there is the Flame FX6 module, which features six different digital effects in one small package. It's great if you just want to add a little bit of reverb or chorus to your sounds. After that it gets a little weird with the Flight of Harmony Plague Bearer, which is technically a filter, but actually it just mangles and crushes the sound in really cool ways. So if you don't mind harsh sounds and don't know it already, go ahead and check it out. Next to that there is the Flight of Harmony Sound of Shadows, which is a delay that can be controlled really well with control voltages and which also has a delay output so you can send the delay signal through other effects and back into the Sound of Shadows for some really cool effects. Again this module is very dirty but has a lot of character and also comes with a small VCA built in. The last module in this row is the Manhattan Analog Mix which is a simple 3 input mixer which can also be ordered as a DIY kit. Okay, almost done. Here's the third row. The first module is something I built myself. It's a quad CV and gate generator, which generates four individual control voltages set by those knobs, and also four individual gates, which are generated when I press the push buttons down here. I can also link the two together to create gate signals at a certain voltage. Then there is also an OR gate, which combines those four gate signals and because I had space there are two columns of multiples. To the right of that module is another module I built myself. It's the switch it and push it module, which is basically just two switches that I can use to switch between inputs and also a push button, which breaks the connection between those two sockets and when I push it, it connects those two sockets. To the right we have a Döpfer dual attenuator module, which I bought before I started with the whole DIY thing, so now I don't think I would buy this or a multiple anymore because they are so cheap and easy to make yourself. On the right side of the third row there is the Voice of Saturn voltage controlled filter. I really like this module because you control everything with control voltages. Not only cutoff and resonance, but also the volume of input A and B and the output. So you can also use it as an attenuating VCA. And last but not least, I have the MFB OSC02 triple VCO module, which I haven't used that much yet because I only bought it recently. But it has three individual VCOs, which can also be linked together, which can be synced, and which also can be ring modulated together, I think, yeah. To the right of that, I have a blind panel, which is just a cardboard printed with the Korg Monotron schematics. Oh, and let's not forget the Koma Commander, 
which is a guitar pedal basically, which can be used with Eurorack as well, or maybe which should even be used with Eurorack or other modular synthesizers. What it does, it has uh, LEDs here, which can measure the distance of an object above it, and uh, according to that distance, it outputs two individual CV and gate signals. Okay, that's it concerning my Eurorack modular. What I haven't showed you and what I won't show you in this video is the Tiny Sizer, which is also a modular synthesizer, which I normally use together with the Eurorack because it interfaces with it really well. I also built a DIY interface box for that. And um, yeah, this one sounds amazing, has lots of features packed into a very small package. And um, yeah, I usually route the Eurorack into that Tiny Sizer and then from there on out to my mixer. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. And again, if you have any questions, comments, or if you want to show me your rack, which I'm definitely interested in, then just post a comment underneath this video. Have a great Christmas break and see you next time.